Hello everyone, welcome to Coder and Boots. So today we are going to discuss about the automated deployment of code and configurations to Nginx using the GitLab DevOps. So uh, in this example, I have used GitLab for demonstrating the CACD uh, process, but the same can be achieved by other version control systems like GitHub, Azure DevOps, so any other popular uh, DevOps systems. Okay, so here I am using GitLab. So in the previous examples, we have discussed about the capabilities of Nginx, various configurations within Nginx. So in today's video, we are going to discuss more about how to systematically deploy contents or code or configurations to Nginx. Technically, we can just copy the configurations or code to the Nginx, but in a production grade scenario, so that just simply copying from somewhere is not a systematic approach and that will lead to various problems. Like we'll not be able to roll back something, we'll not know what is happening and it is not secure. So for doing it in a systematic way, we need to follow a DevOps process and this is something that I follow in my daily uh, job as part of my day to day life. Okay, so let's discuss more about this topic. So here I have used GitLab and AWS service like EC2. So in GitLab, I have a repository, I have created a repository and I have uh, created a self-hosted GitLab runner and I have used GitLab variables. Okay. So why I have used self-hosted GitLab runner is I want, I don't want to execute my logic in the public uh, runners. Okay. And I don't want to basically, uh, I wanted to run in a secure way and I wanted that runner to be in my network because uh, this hosting, the web hosting is happening within my EC2 instance. So I don't want that code and configuration to go somewhere and I don't want uh, any public machines accessing my web server, uh, web server. Okay. And I am using two EC2 instances. So one for runner and one for uh, web server. And I have mentioned a load balancer here. In this example, I am not showing that, but in a production grade scenario, I would recommend web server, uh, not web server, load balancer for uh, front facing or end exposing the website to the end users. So, but this is not nothing to do with the deployment. It is just for, uh, for from a security point of view, this load balancer is recommended. Okay, so I'll explain the workflow what's happening here. So we have the code in the GitLab, GitLab repo. So developer will commit the code to the GitLab repo. So he will clone, he will make the changes, he'll commit and push it back to the repo. And what will happen is uh, once the code gets committed, the GitLab pipeline gets triggered. So in the pipeline, we write a logic that copies the code from the GitLab repo and deploys it to the uh, web server. Okay. So in a typical production scenario, this happens in various cycles. So there will be a cycle for the development, which deploys to the development environment. And similarly, there will be a cycle for the QA environment, which deploys the code to the QA environment. And there will be another one, which will finally deploy to the production environment. So in this example, I'm not going to discuss about all these three different cycles. I'm just going to discuss a simple cycle that just deploys the code. It, whenever we make commits to the repository, it runs the pipeline and it deploys the code securely to the product, the web server. Okay. So now let's talk about the security associated with it. So the code repo is in GitLab. So GitLab is a very popular uh, version control system and a DevOps system. So here the code is secure. Okay. So with proper role based access control, multi-factor authentication. So uh, the code is secure over there. Then the runner, so runner and web server, both are hosted on AWS in my case, but it could be an on-premise system or it can be any other uh, cloud-based system. So in this example, I'm using AWS EC2 instance and, but this runner and web server, I have uh, hosted and the communication between this runner and web server is going to be local communication. So I'm not going to, so if you know uh, AWS EC2, so it has, if you are provisioning a machine, in the public network, it has two IP addresses. One is a public IP address and second is a private IP address. Private IP address is something which is visible only in the private network, which is within the AWS uh, VPC network. So uh, here the communication, the runner communicates with the web server through the private IP address, not through the public IP address. So these communications 
we will configure it in the security group so in the web server what we will do we will enable the traffic from uh, so if you are using load balancer enable the traffic from load balancer and enable the traffic from runner and in the runner what you do uh, configure the outbound traffic only to the web server no inbound traffic okay so this is how we and outbound traffic even to communicate to the GitLab run I mean the GitLab also you need to do so except these two there are no other communications going inside this machines okay so runner to web server we will use a private IP okay so this communication is using private IP technically if you use public IP also it will work but I would not recommend I would recommend using the private IP so that this transfer will be secure okay <coughs> and in Typical protection grade scenario, I would recommend a load balancer so that these two machines can be kept in a private network and the load balancer will be exposing this website to the public network. Okay, so now let's get into the action. So uh, here, if you, if you see, I have two EC2 instances. Okay, so one is a, for the web server which has Nginx installed and second is basically for the GitLab runner. So here I have the self-hosted GitLab runner installed. So the configurations of uh, hosting uh, the GitLab runner on an EC2 instance or basically configuring a self-hosted runner, it is already explained in one of the previous videos. So please refer to that video uh, for the details of how to install that, okay? And the web, the installation of Nginx and the associated configuration. So this was also explained in one of the previous videos. Okay, so uh, so I will explain only about about the DevOps part of this. So let's get into the repository. So this is my repository, and if you see, I have GitLab CI YAML file here, and I have site contents. Okay, this has my website. So it's a very simple website. Okay, so I I have just uh, I used one of the publicly available code here. So a simple website and then uh, here I have my GitLab YAML file. Okay, so here if you see this basics also I have the basics of the GitLab YAML I have explained in the past in one of the previous video, but I'm just explaining once again. Okay, so I have two stages here. One is build and second is deploy. So you can add more stages here like validate, test, all those things here but for in this example I am using only two and in the build job I am not doing anything so because this is just an HTML page so I don't know how to do any any build operation inside this so I'm just echoing something okay printing uh, compiling code compile complete so this is basically practically uh, nothing is happening in this one okay so uh, it's just a dummy uh, stage we can say dummy job okay in the deploy job what I'm doing is so deploy job I have uh, used so if you see the tax cloud so the what this will do is uh, my runner the self-hosted runner I have used a tag cloud okay so based on this what will happen this job will run on the cloud or basically my runner which is on the self-hosted uh, runner which is in that ECT instance okay so here also I have used the tag cloud and what will happen is in that self-hosted runner I have used a docker executor okay so this will run inside a docker container within that particular ec2 instance okay so before script what i am doing is i am doing apt-get update okay so and then apt-get install rsync okay so this will be so inside this deploy operation what's happening is it's provisioning uh, a docker image and inside the docker image it's doing apt-get update apt-get install rsync and open ssh client okay two things it's doing then third thing is it is basically doing it is uh, saving a file okay with dollar ssh key i'll explain what this file is because i've used a variable i have created a variable in my repository and this is getting saved as a file inside the container and then we are changing the permission of that file to uh, 4002 uh, basically we are changing the permit updating the permission to 400 okay so after that what we are doing is we are in the this is the script part so before the script the before script section will execute and here what will happen is so this is just to display everything and here we are doing rsync okay rsync means it will basically do a synchronization of my source folders what is the source folder the contents of site contents okay the site contents basically what is site contents in my of some repo of some awesome website project i have site content which is my 
this this folder okay site contents folder this has my website content okay code it copies it basically synchronizes my website code to the target server okay ubuntu ubuntu is the username of the production server so i can para, we can parameterize this also right now i have just hard coded the username but you can even parameterize in the variable okay at pro dollar prod server dollar prod server is the variable i have used in my project this value comes from the gitlab variables and to the location where www.html okay so what will happen is this is using a key if you use see this rsync so this is doing an rsync from the runner server to the target server which is the web server okay so if you see it's doing the deployment from this runner server to the web ser uh, target server so the communication between this is through ssh okay and what i have done is i have configured if you see go to the settings cacd under variables if you expand this you will see two variables one is prod server so if you see this if you edit this you will see the ip address this is what i am referring inside here so if you see here i am referring ubuntu at prod dollars prod server okay so this is what i am referring and this dollar prod server will the val it will get a value of this this is the private ip address of that web server okay and the environment scope i have restricted to production and i have kept protect variable mask variable so that it won't even get printed in the logs okay and at the runtime this will get reference similarly even this username also i can update okay instead of just hard coding the username here i can put dollar user i can and keep another variable here okay and here ssh key so this is of a variable type and ssh key what i have done is this is the ec2 instance ssh key okay so basically for the runner to communicate with the web server so this will do an ssh rsync and the authentication is the key based authentication right so this will do the ssh using the key and the key i have saved in the gitlab variable and here if you see so this is my key is ssh key okay type is file environment scope production okay this here i mean you can specify the name of environment okay so in my case i have used production and this is my key okay i saved the key here so that it is uh, I, I am not exposing that in the project but it is securely stored in the gitlab variables okay so that is what you see here i am basically saving the key to a local file here i am changing the permission to 400 and i am referring the permission here inside i am referring the file inside the rsync command so what will do what it will do it will basically copy the contents from this site okay so from here it will copy from here it will get copied to the web server so right now what we will do is let's try to make a change okay let's see how it works here okay so i am going to make so before this let's see the initial version of the website okay so for that what we can do take the public ip okay see coders website v1.0 now let's do one thing let's change let's go inside and let's make the change make a change okay so i am editing this file so in in the normal in the usual scenario what will happen is developer will be making this change from his id and committing it but i am just doing a direct edit in the uh, in the gitlab repo itself okay so this i am going to make it like instead of 1.0 i am going to make it coders website coders website 2.0 okay so let's commit it version commit changes so now let's see what happens here so i updated the changes and if you go to the left okay so build okay enter the build you can see pipelines you see a new pipeline is getting triggered okay you see it's running new pipeline started running build job it is success now it is with the deploy job okay let's see what happens so you see it says application deployed successfully and it's showing like i mean sending the incremental list index dot 
HTML. So it identified it. It will not. So what rsync will do is it will not basically send everything. It will only send the file which has the changes. So only send sends the changes. It will not basically copy everything. Okay. And it sent that and it's showing like I mean application deployed successfully. So now let's refresh here. So see, let's see whether it got deployed. You see, so the coder website v2.0 it got deployed automatically. So without even me getting inside the website server or web server, the deployment happened. Okay. So in this way, uh, we can control the access to the server because we don't need to give the production server access to the developer for the deployment. So, and in the GitLab itself, we can configure all the rules like who can access which repository, who can access which branch and to which environment the deployment will happen. All those kind of controls we can configure. Okay. So, so let me summarize once again. So from the GitLab, okay. So this is basically GitLab repo. It went to, it went to the web server. Okay. So here the action is developer committed the code and website changes deployed to the server okay and we can create this is web server Okay, and we can do this for development. Okay, so means dev will deploy to dev environment. Okay, and another cycle like QA to QA environment. And prod to prod environment. Okay, so this like we can be achieved by uh, creating multiple branches in the GitLab repo and accessing or basically protecting the branches with various access controls. Okay, so in this way we can achieve this uh, deployment to various different environments. But in this example, I just explained the simple flow that takes basically that deploys the code from the GitLab branch to the uh, the web server. Okay, without even directly giving, without giving a direct access to the web servers uh, server i hope this example is clear okay so we can even make changes multiple changes here uh, so let's say like i mean if, if you make any change what will happen is the gitlab will automatically uh, sends the sends the change and triggers the pipeline okay and you will see the the pipelines uh, here under the pipeline section so i hope this example is clear uh, so the basics of GitLab, the basics of uh, Nginx, all these are covered in the previous videos. If you have any questions, uh, you can refer to the previous videos. And if you have any further question, you can comment below this video. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. So if, uh, feel free to comment below this video if you have any qu queries. Thank you. Thank you very much.